appreciate everybody who's watching this. Uh, let's work through these problems together. Um, we're gonna find the integral. Okay, you know, is it inverse trig? Is it log rule? Is it uh, something else altogether? Is it simple u substitution? These are the kinds of things that we have to think about uh, in order to, to make these things possible. So like I've always said, uh, I start, if it's a fraction like this, uh, where basically I have x dx over something, I think, could this be the log rule? Because it's the easiest one to to eliminate. And if it works, then just to, to go ahead and do it, right? So let's see. If it's the log rule, it needs to look like du over u, which means the entire denominator has to be the u in this situation. So let's let the entire denominator be u. That's negative 8x squared plus 3 du equals negative 16x dx. Um, that's pretty good. It just needs a negative 16 right here. I could cancel that with a negative 1 16th. Okay, so now this is du. This is u. It looks exactly like this. This is just the natural log of the absolute value of u. So I replace this with negative 8x squared plus 3 and I am good to go. So negative 1 16th uh, times the natural log of the absolute value of negative 8x squared plus 3 plus c. Next up is this guy here. Uh, let's try this again. Let's try u is the denominator. Then du, which I'm hoping is the numerator if the, trig the uh, log rule is going to work, is cosine of 20 theta but then it's times the derivative of the inside, which is 20. Uh, and then we've got our d theta. So cosine 20 theta times 20 dx, that would work. So like if I had a 20 right there, that would work. So I just need a 1 20th out here. So now this is u, this is du. So I have 1 20th times the natural log of the absolute value of the sine of 20 theta plus c. Next, find dy dx if y equals blah, blah, blah. So dy dx would just be the derivative of this. That's what you're saying. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So dy dx is equal to x to the fifth times e to the x to the ninth. So I've got a, a function and another function like u and v, like the product rule. So let's take the derivative of u. That's going to be 5x to the fourth. Then this guy stays the same. Plus... Now we'll leave this guy alone, and we'll take the derivative of e to the x to the ninth. So the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. And we'll multiply by the, uh, the derivative of that uh, inside function. So that's going to be 9x to the eighth. And uh, then I'll clean it up a little bit. So we've got to 5x to the fourth, e to the x to the ninth, plus 9x to the thirteenth e to the x to the ninth. And if I wanted, I could factor out an e to the fourth. I could factor out an e to the x to the ninth. Uh, e to the fourth times e, or sorry, not e to the fourth, x to the fourth. x to the fourth times e to the x to the ninth power times five, okay, just five, plus nine x to the ninth. That's how that could look. That may be an answer on the AP test as a, one of the multiple choice answers, so you be ready for that. So find the derivative of the function. Okay, so there is a, a roadmap for that. It's right here. It's an arc sine function, so it's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. That's if this is x, but what if it's something else like u? And this would be u squared. And then I'd multiply the, by the derivative of u, right? Chain rule. It's just chain rule. Don't forget the chain rule. Okay, so we have yeah, we got a weird thing going on there. F prime of x is equal to well, just that three, the constant multiple, uh, one over the square root of one. What was it? Minus minus u, which is this long thing, eight 
x squared plus z z7 x minus 6 that's going to be squared if that were just x there that would have just been 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared but it's something other than x so we just need to use the chain rule we'll multiply by the derivative of this function the derivative is 16 x plus 7 there we go. Any anything equivalent to that is perfect. I could distribute the three to the denominator or the numerator, excuse me, or whatever, whatever, whatever. This is good. Find the indefinite integral. Mm, so uh, I don't think it's the log rule because that isn't that's too simple a, a, a derivative for it to be the derivative of the denominator. So maybe it's a uh, like maybe u is 49 minus 144 uh, x squared. Okay, um, maybe that's it. Like that. Du then would have to be negative 288 x. That doesn't look anything like the numerator. That's no good. So now what do I do? Hopefully at that point it dawns on you that there's these inverse trig functions, and we look back at those. And we look for one of the square root. We look for one where it looks like a number minus a function, which is what this looks like, number minus function. So this is exactly what it looks like, number minus function. So um, here, let's do this, a clever little thing. Let's get that out of the way. We'll cut this out over here. So we'll use that as a reminder. Give it a little color. A little too much color. I don't know. I don't know if I can ease up on the color much more than that. I don't know. What I'm wasting my time. So um, it would be if it looks like du over a squared minus u squared. Uh, then I can take the derivative, or the antiderivative this way. Well, if I make this um, look like that, it'll be 1 over the square root of 7 squared minus, here's the important part, 12x squared. So 12x is actually u, right? Because u is the thing being squared. So uh, is, the, is the numerator du? If I take the derivative of u, I will get 12x. Uh, no, I'll get 12. So the numerator would have to be 12, which I'll have to cancel out with a 1 12th. Other than that, it looks just like this. So I'll do the 1 12th times the arc sine of u, which is 12x, over a, which is 7, plus c. All right, so you can tell the bell's rung. School is over, so I may have to pause and cut in and out, but we'll just keep going as we can. So. We have x to the fourth, dy dx, I like to call it. it makes separation of variables a lot easier. Um, so we're going to separate these variables, and we will get, let's divide by y, multiply by dx, divide by x to the fourth, with dy over y equals dx over x to the fourth. Da, 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 that is right. Okay. Take the antiderivative of both sides. Let's see. This side, the antiderivative of dy over y is going to be the natural log of y. On this side, I'll treat this like uh, x to the negative 4. So the antiderivative would be. So the antiderivative of x to the negative 4 dx would be negative. Uh, four, negative 1 third. No, yeah, negative 1 third x to the negative 3. Because I multiply by negative 3, I get positive 1, x to the negative 4. So there we go, plus c. Then we make both sides the exponent of e. We exponentiate both sides. And we get y equals uh, e to the negative 1 third x to the negative 3 plus c, or times e to the c, because I would, I would multiply those together. e to the c is just some constant. Okay, let's call it c1 so no one gets confused. These are not the same c's, but I'll put c 
e to the negative one third x to the negative three. So there it is. Y equals c e to the negative one third x to the negative three. And that's it. All right, that's that page. Next page. Try the general solution to this thing. Okay, so I like I said, I like to write it as dy dx. Y. If we separate the variables, we get dy over y, not 2y, because I don't, I don't like to, I like dy over y. That's easy, right? Natural log of y. If I put two in there, it can become the hassle. It's easier if I leave the two here. All right, so we get dy over y. Oh, equals. Um, oh, I was saying two. It's a little easier to have this multiple of two, and we get two times dx over seven plus x. Just making sure that that all checks. It does. All right, so I take the antiderivative. We get the natural log of y equals, well, what's the antiderivative of this? It wouldn't take long to figure out that this is a function. This is the derivative of that function, or the derivative of this is just dx. So we have 2 times the natural log of 7 plus x um, plus c. Okay. Uh, to do what's easiest to do here, um, probably because I know like that I exponentiate this side because I get y. So if I was to exponentiate this side, it would be nice for the e to the natural log thing to cancel out over here too. So I'll use the properties of exponents to put this as the square of this guy here. So when I exponentiate, I get just uh, the natural log of 7 plus uh, x, right? And instead of plus c, I'll write it as times e to the c, okay? And uh, e to the c, that's just uh, something, um, some constant. So let's call that c1, and we'll just do c times the natural log of 7 plus x. Okay, so that works well. Uh, Um, so we're going to write a differential equation that fits this uh, written description and solve it and uh, find the particular solution. So we'll start with the verbal statement. The rate of change with respect to t. What does that say to you? It should say change in y with respect to the change in t, dy dt, the derivative of y with respect to t, is proportional to y. Remember that if I say if a is proportional to y, okay, if a is proportional to y, then a equals some constant times y. So in this case, the derivative is the thing that's proportional to something. It's proportional to y, so it's equal to k times y. Um, so we will now find the general solution. We'll take the antiderivative of both sides uh, after separating the variables. So we get dy over y equals k dt. dy over y, we've done this so many times, natural log of y. k dt, remember k is a constant, so it pretends like 5 or 2 or whatever. So what's the antiderivative of 5 with respect to t? Uh, it would be 5t, so it would just be kt t plus c. This plus c is really important this time. I, I, I'm not marking you off if you forget when you just take an antiderivative, but it completely changes this, this uh, problem if you don't do that this time. Uh, here we'll exponentiate both sides, and we will get uh, y equals, we'll call this c1 so nobody gets confused here, ce to the kt. We could leave it as plus c, but uh, it would make it a lot more difficult. I think it's much nicer to look at it this way. So we are going to say that when t is 0, y is 20. Well, I could plug 0 in here and 20 here, and I'll get 20 equals. Well, that's e to the 0, because 0 times k is 0. e to the 0 is 1, so 20 is c. So now I know what c is. All right? When t is 4, y is 68. So now with the information that c is 20, let's do this again. 
y is 68, c is 20, e is e, k is I don't know, t though is 4, so let's work this out. So 60, let's see, divide by 20, 3.4, okay, is equal to e to the k, well say 4k. How do I get at this 4k in the exponent? Remember, take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 3.4 is equal to 4k. So we divide by 4. Uh, so the natural log of 3.4 over 4 is equal to k. And now I know c is 20, and I know k is th the natural log of 3.4 over 4. And if I can plug in a t, I can figure out y. So knowing what I know, figure out what y is when t is 12. So y is equal to 20, which we found for c, to the, times e to the natural log of 3.4 over 4 times 12. All right, so all I have to do is uh, figure that out. So that's going to be actually just 3, right? 12 divided by 4 is 3. So 3 times the natural log of 3.4 I'm going to take e to that power. I'm going to multiply that by 20 and 786.08. And there we go. Solve this differential equation. Okay, so if I write this as dy over dx, I get dy over y equals negative 6x dx. And the natural log of y equals uh, negative 3x squared plus c. So we exponentiate both sides, and we get um, y is equal to c. Right, we'll call this c1. So then when we call this c, we know they're not the same. Um, if you're if you're at all confused about this, I just did this on a previous problem. Go back and, uh, and look at like one of the first problems that I did. Uh, and it, I talk about why we can write this as c times e to the negative 3x squared. And there we go. There's the uh, general solution to that differential equation. Next, solve this differential equation. So we'll get dy times negative 4y equals root x dx, right, if we separate the variables. So the antiderivative of this side is negative 2y squared. The antiderivative of this side, if we write it as x to the 1 half, right, is going to be 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. And since that's such a mess, maybe we'll just multiply by negative 2, and we'll get y squared equals um, maybe, even, maybe even negative 6. What, what, am I, what am I doing? What am I doing? Hold on. Maybe we'll multiply it by 3 so that we don't have a uh, denominator of 3 anymore. That, that makes more sense. How about negative 6y squared equals 2x to the 3 halves? And yes, I'm supposed to multiply this, by, this side by 3, but if I multiply c by 3, then it's just some other constant. Right? So we could just call it constant. C. This is the first version of the constant. Here's the final version. So negative 6y squared equals 2x to the 3 halves plus c. I'm going to use integration to find the general solution of the differential equation. So same thing as we've been doing dy dx. Well, this is easy because it's just dy dx equals this. Like This is the thing that I'm used to taking the antiderivative of. I could separate the variables. I'll get dy equals negative 3x cubed plus x dx. But it would just be the same. So y is equal to the antiderivative of this side would just be, uh, let's see, the fourth, so negative 3 fourths x to the fourth plus 1 half x squared plus c. Mm -hmm, that's it. Okay, sketching the solutions, this is something that you, somebody had trouble with. So here, let me remind you what a differential equation is. It's, right, especially this kind, dy dx, just plain as day says dy dx is equal to negative 3x over y. So this, what does it tell me about this? What does dy dx tell me about y? It tells me 
if I plug in some x and y, it tells me the slope of y. Okay, so um, let's say that I know that this graph goes to this point, then it must have this slope, and then it's going to go through this point, which means it must have some kind of slope like this, and then it's going to go through this point, which means it needs to have some slope like this. Right? Remember the slope field is a picture of the slopes of the function we're talking about. So apparently it's some kind of an ellipse kind of a shape. Okay. Um, this would also be a solution because it is a, a graph that has these slopes. Right? This one does too. This slope field was made this slope field was made with this equation. Let's let's test it out. Maybe we're not so sure. Let's look at the slope right there. That looks like it's at negative um, one and a half, so negative three halves. And one, maybe maybe one point seven five, so one and three fourths, so seven fourths. Well, the slope should be negative three x over y, so negative three times negative three halves, negative three x over y, seven fourths. So 9 halves over 7 fourths, multiply by the reciprocal, 9 halves times 4 sevenths, cancel, 2. Uh, we have 18 over 7. That is pretty close to it's somewhere between 2 and 3. Does this look like it has a slope of somewhere between 2 and 3? I'd believe it if you told me that. Uh, so any point defines the slope by just plugging into this equation, right? dy dx tells us the slope. So how do we figure out uh, the solution? We separate the variables and blah, 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 right? So dy, y dy equals negative 3x dx. Uh, so then 1 half y squared equals negative 3 halves x squared plus c we we'll multiply by c, we get y squared equals negative 3x squared plus c. That looks pretty good. So y squared equals negative 3x squared plus c, or y squared plus 3x squared equals c, or y equals the square root of negative 3x squared plus c, or whatever you want to write it as. And there's the answer key, so that was the last one. Um, Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.